Most Canadians can't tell the difference between the big five Canadian telecom companies whenever they visit the mall. And not that there's tons of other brands too, it gets really confusing. When it comes to investing, Canadians probably invest in the one that they have their phone plan with, or the one that has the highest dividend. For a quick answer, the best investment this decade was Quebecor. But stay tuned and I'll show you how much you would have made this decade with an investment in each, as well as some major differences between them and what interesting things they've been doing over the years. They're Canada's largest provider of wireless phone plans with 10.8 million subscribers. That's 30% of Canada's population. The Rogers family has a 91% voting control of the company. Rogers also owns the Fido and Chatter brands, the Toronto Blue Jays, and the Rogers Centre beside the CN Tower. They own 37.5% of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment, which owns the Toronto Maple Leafs, Raptors, FC, Argonauts, and Marlies. They own 50% of Glentel, which is essentially those T-Booth Wireless and Wireless Wave brands operating in mall kiosks. They own 11% of Kajiko. AT&T used to have a 34% ownership of Rogers Wireless, but Rogers bought it back for $1.77 billion in 2004. Rogers has an exclusive agreement to broadcast NHL hockey games until 2026. They operate networks like Sportsnet, City TV, and TSC, as well as radio networks like 680 News and KISS. Here are some important parts from their history. In 2011, they teamed up with Bell to buy Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment for $1.3 billion. In 2013, they scored a $5.2 billion deal to be the exclusive broadcaster for NHL hockey games until 2026. In 2014, they acquired Source Cable, a small TV, internet, and phone service provider. In 2015, they launched Ignite Gigabit Internet, their fastest internet ever, with download speeds up to 1 gigabit per second with unlimited usage. In 2018, they launched Ignite TV, which is their internet-based television product that was licensed from Comcast. In 2019, they rolled out the first 5G network in Canada. And also in 2019, they are the first Canadian carrier to introduce unlimited data plans. A $10,000 investment in Rogers over the last decade would have generated $5,100 in dividends and your total and investment value, so your dividends plus shares, would be around $22,000, which is an annualized growth rate of 8.2%. They're Canada's largest telecom company, and it's nearly the size of Rogers and Telus combined. The company was named after Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone. Bell owns the Virgin and Lucky Mobile brands, and the Source Electronics stores. They own 28% of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment, and the other 50% of Glentel. Bell is Canada's largest provider of TV and internet, with approximately 2.8 million and 3.6 million subscribers respectively. That's 23% and 30% of Canadian households. They have a partial ownership of the Montreal Canadiens Hockey Club, Eventco, and both the Bell Place and Place Bell in Quebec. They own CTV and Crave, which is HBO Canada, BNN, Discovery, and the Movie Network. They plan to invest $20 billion over the next five years in deployment of fiber. That's enough money to almost buy two Shaw communications today. Here's their history. In 2011, they fully acquired CTV. In 2014, they owned almost 3,500 public Wi-Fi hotspots at McDonald's, Tim Hortons, and Chapter Indigo locations. In 2015, they announced a $1.14 billion investment in rollout of fiber in almost 1 million Toronto homes and businesses. In 2016, they showed first signs of 5G technology. In 2017, they launched a Lucky Mobile brand. Also in 2017, they acquired Manitoba Telecom for $2.9 billion. In 2018, they bought Alarm Force for $182 million. In 2019, approximately 5.1 million Canadian households have access to Bell's 1.5 gigabit 5 internet. That's 40% of households. A $10,000 investment in Bell over the last decade would have generated $8,600 in dividends, and the end investment value would be around $27,500. That's an annualized growth rate of 10.6%. TELUS primarily focuses on operations in western provinces of Canada. As of today, Rogers and TELUS are almost identical in size. The company owns the Public Mobile and Kudo brands. It owns ADT Canada. Verizon used to own 20% of TELUS before selling it back to them for $2.3 billion in 2004. TELUS Health is the largest healthcare information technology company in Canada. TELUS has invested more than $175 billion in internet infrastructure and operations since the year 2000, and is going to add another $40 billion in the next three years for a total of $215 billion. That's enough money to buy two to four Canadian banks today. 
In 2013, they acquired Public Mobile for $229 million. In 2015, they announced to invest $1 billion for fiber networks in both Edmonton and Vancouver. In 2016, TELUS International, the outsourcing services department, was valued at $1.2 billion after selling a stake to an Asian private investment firm. In 2017, it grew its international operations by spending almost $600 million to acquire Kroll, Voxpro, and Xaviant. In 2017, they acquired certain assets from Manitoba Telecom before it was fully taken over by BCE. In 2018, they launched a gigabit internet. In 2019, they acquired Competence Call Center for $1.3 billion. They're a leading provider of business services with a focus on customer relationship management and content moderation. Lastly, in 2019, they acquired ADT Canada for $700 million. A $10,000 investment in TELUS over the last decade would have generated $8,700 in dividends, and the end investment value would be around $32,700. That's an annualized growth rate of 12.6%. The Shaw family owns 80% voting control of the company. Shaw was originally a subsidiary of Shaw Core, the oil field services company, back in the 1970s before going out on its own. Course Entertainment was an original spin-out of Shaw's media division. Shaw owns Freedom Mobile, which only operates in Ontario, British Columbia, and Alberta. The name change from Win Mobile was due to some troubling baggage in its history with ownership and complaints. Approximately 1.6 million people use Freedom Mobile. That's 15% the size of any of the big three subscriber base and 4.5% of the Canadian population. For new wireless phone subscribers, Freedom is comparable to the big three in adding around 250,000 subscribers every year. In 2010, Shaw bought broadcasting assets from Can West to form Shaw Media. In 2014, they partnered with Rogers to start Show Me, the video on demand service to compete with Netflix and Bell's Crave TV, but it was shut down two years later. In 2016, they sold Shaw Media to Chorus Entertainment for $2.6 billion in cash and Chorus shares. In 2016, they bought Win Mobile for $1.6 billion and renamed it to Freedom Mobile. In 2017, they sold Via West for $1.65 billion. Also in 2017, they launched Blue Sky TV, which licenses Comcast's cloud-based capabilities. In 2018, they launched their famous $50 for 10 gigabyte data phone plans. Also in 2018, they entered into retail distribution agreements with 140 Loblaws and Walmart locations. Lastly, in 2020, J.R. Shaw, the founder of the company, passed away in March. A $10,000 investment in Shaw Communications over the last decade would have generated $5,500 in dividends, and the end investment value would be around $16,700. That's an annualized growth rate of 5.3%. They own Videotron, the largest cable operator in Quebec, covering almost 80% of the province's households. Its CEO, Pierre Palladeau, owns 72% of the company. In terms of market share in Quebec, it owns 16% of the wireless market, 51% of internet, and 52% of cable TV. The company has an LTE network sharing agreement with Rogers in Quebec and Ottawa. The company owns TVA Group, the largest French television network in North America, as well as Media QMI, which operates several Quebec-based newspapers. Back in 2010, Videotron officially started the wireless network. In 2013, the company signed a 20-year network sharing agreement with Rogers for LTE in Quebec and Ottawa. In 2015, they sold their English language newspaper business for $305 million. In 2016, they acquired FiberNor for $125 million, which provides fiber optic connectivity for businesses. In 2017, the company sold its Ontario-based Spectrum licenses to Shaw and Rogers, implying that it no longer has interest to expand outside of Quebec. In 2018, they repurchased the remaining 18.5% of Quebec or media that it didn't own from Case for $1.7 billion. Lastly, in 2019, they launched Helix TV, which licenses Comcast cloud-based capabilities. A $10,000 investment in Quebec over the last decade would have generated $1,500 in dividends, and the end investment value would be around $36,500. That's an annualized growth rate of 13.8%. Just a quick summary, here's all the Canadian telecoms and how much you would have made with each one over the last decade. The best investment was Quebec or at 13.8% growth, and the worst was Shaw at 5.3%. But an investment in any of these telecom companies over the last decade beat the broader Canadian stock market average of 4.6%. For the average telecom performance over the last decade, which is the same as if you equally invested $2,000 in each of the five companies, you would have received around $5,900 in dividends and had an end investment value of $27,000. That's an annualized return of 10.5%. 
So if you enjoyed this video or learned something new about Canadian telecom companies, remember to smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. Let me know in the comments below which telecom company you would want to invest in or already are.